What's up everyone? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today's video is going to be all about feature scaling. So sit back, relax with your favorite snack, and let's get started, shall we? Hey honors, I hope you all having a fantastic day. As always, my name is Wayne McCain, and for those of you who are brand new to the community, the Island Robotics community is all about using Python to learn application machine learning and artificial intelligence through demonstration. And today's video is going to be about, like I was just saying, feature scaling. Now, there are two types of feature scaling. There's standardization as well as normalization. We're not going to be dealing with normalization really big just to understand feature scaling is standardization also known as standard scalar now i can sit here all i want and be like one of those people that have those fancy little things going on right here but instead i'll be showing all of you real world applications of standard scalar starting off with is by heading over to a jupiter notebook where we're going to be having the data well the islander wrote da, blah, 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 if i can speak correctly we're going to be having the islander data pre-processing data discovery module up on the screen really what reason being is because jupiter notebooks allows us to see the whole head method where if you were just to run it in pycharm or any other text editor or IDE we would only get a small small snippet of what is being produced by the head method and really we want to be able to view the head method to its full potential so that we can actually make a decision on which columns need feature scaling so honestly what we can see right off the bat is if we look over here at total bedrooms actually let me zoom in real quick all right right there that's exactly what I want we can see that uh, Total bedrooms has values ranging from 129 all the way up to 280. But for some reason in row two, we have this huge jump to 1,106. Now, what's what's going to happen when we create our algorithm or model is that that one column or that one row actually is going to get weighed more than any of the other rows within that one column. We really want to prevent that because it's going to make our data set really biased towards that one row, where in reality, we really want our machine learning model to produce the most accurate predictions without any biasism so what we're going to be doing is standard scalar which is going to be preventing that by essentially taking the whole mean of that column and it's going to therefore change all the values not the shape the shape is going to stay the same but it's going to change all the values to represent the mean value of that whole row and the way that we're going to be able to do this is actually very simply by where well, we're going to be coming over to a python console where i have it pretty much set up with pandas and we have defined our data which is going to be a pandas data frame and after that what we're going to want to do is actually we're going to want to say from sklearn dot preprocessing import standard scalar now we're going to next be creating a brand new instance of standard scalar by saying scalar e no equals standard scalar and there's gonna be nothing within these parentheses but the next line we're going to actually be fit transforming our data to the scalar object so we're gonna say new scalar equals scalar dot fit transform of data at column total bedrooms all right now we also have to reshape that column into by saying array dot reshape negative one comma one now we can leave new scalar just how it is if you would like but really what you have to think about is new scalar and our original data set are considered two separate entities so we have to combine them by simply saying data dot drop at columns equals total bedrooms and we're also going to say in place equals true so that way all the changes we make to this data set is going to be finalized next thing we're going to want to do is actually create a brand new column of total bedrooms by simply saying data at total bedrooms equals new scalar and just like that when we say print head well no not head data at total bedrooms dot head we will get this output which is exactly what we want so you can see our first instance was originally not negative 0 0.97 but as you all can see that there is a more of a gradual increase of what's going on within this one data, well, within this one column, which is exactly what we want. All right, so that was a lot of code as well as we're not gonna only want to be doing this 
feature scaling or standard scaling to one comb, but we're going to want to do it to several different columns that we feel fall within the rules that I just talked about. Now, for you islanders are just getting into machine learning, artificial intelligence, or maybe just getting into programming, those rules may be feeling very overwhelming to you. Luckily for all of you, we have one really cool trick that's going to help you out with all of this. All right, so we're back over here within the Python script, and what we're going to be doing in order to actually achieve this one little trick is we're actually going to say... Scalar equals IR dot feature scalar. All right. Yes, within the community's Python package, we have this module called feature scalar. And what it does is allows us to pass in a pandas data frame. In our case, it's going to be called data and it's going to evaluate the whole data set and make decisions on which columns should have the standard scalar applied to them. Once we've done that, what we're going to want to do is also we're going to want to say data equals scalar dot check. All right, and now in order to actually view which columns had those changes applied to them, what we're going to say is print data at scalar dot check. All right, well, not check, my bad. Next one, all right, and we're going to also want to view these columns within the head method. All right, and then once we've done that, we're going to be getting one error, but I want you all to see which error I am talking about, and that is this near bay all right the reason why we're getting an error on near bay is because we have not yet encoded the data set and since we're viewing the whole column well the whole data set instead of just one individual column like we're doing just in that example we're really going to want to encode that column for our data set so the way we're going to do this is i just want to delete this so it doesn't confuse you guys and then we're going to say encoder equals ir dot encoder we're going to pass in data and then we're also going to say data equals encoder dot check and then once we've done that we will now be able to view what are the changes within our data set and as you all can see we have a good amount not only did total bedrooms have the standard scalar applied to them but a lot more like total rooms, medium income, median house value. And that is only just the tip of the iceberg of what can be applied with this. Alrighty Islanders, so for all the Python packages that we worked with in today's video, go ahead and check out the description bar down below to get the pip install commands for all those packages. And for those of you that go down there, you're gonna notice something really special. Our Python community package, Islander Day Preprocessing, is now published to PyPI. So go ahead and check out the pip command down in the description bar down below. If Alright Islanders, I have a question for all of you. I wanna know what type of Python IDEs or or text editors do you currently use? I'm considering switching my IDE from PyCharm to another IDE. So I really would love to get all sorts of different input. Leave it down in the comment section down below. And if you want to check out more machine learning videos, then go ahead and check out the videos popping up on the screen, as well as go ahead and check on, the, well, click on the logo to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet. I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding. I love you all.